Marcus Taylor, I'm here at the ID Tech Expo in Berlin and uh, we've uh, had a really good show and we've been demonstrating our energy harvesting and RFID products for use in rubber elastomers and polymers and uh, these are some examples of the work that we've been doing. Here you can see a supercapacitor that is very flexible and also able to withstand very high temperatures which is necessary for tire manufacture and production. So what, what would this be for? So this basically works with this. So if we look at this, when I shake that, I'm not left handed. It's generating power? So the idea is that this will generate power that is then stored in the supercapacitor that then is used to power this. So this structure here will be implemented on this area here. And then this will charge a supercapacitor, which is then being managed to provide power to the TPMS sensor and this is a low frequency and this is the antenna for the 434 frequency uh, range. So are you powering an IoT device? This is a, a IoT and it's the Internet of Tires that we're talking about tires. here. Internet so of Tires. So every tire is going to be able to communicate by itself? Every tire will be able to communicate by itself to other tires as well in time. To what are they, they going to be saying to each other? They're going to be saying, I'm too hot, my pressure is too low, um, I'm on the left, you're on the right, are we going forwards, are we going backwards? I'm going fast, I'm slipping, what should we tell the engine management unit? Uh, we're on an autonomous vehicle now, oh my tread depth is too low, we need to go for a new tire. How can they measure all this? So, Do you have everything in there? No, this is still the, the, the basic product which has only got TPMS. But and TPMS in, means? Uh... TPMS is Tire Pressure Monitoring System. So in 2012, 2014 there was legislation that was introduced to um, force passenger vehicle uh, owners to monitor their tires because about 20% of all accidents on the road are caused by underinflated tires. And of course, underinflated tires also translate to increased fuel consumption and increased tire wear. But the main driver is safety. So tires, first and foremost, are safety products. Um, and the supercapacitor is, uh, is a big deal? It's a big deal because uh, supercapacitors or capacitors in general don't like high temperatures. Uh, typically, supercapacitors will stop to work at about 80 degrees. So what's amazing about this material is it keeps working uh, with almost no change in efficiency up to around 200 Celsius, maybe more. Um, if we go over here... Do tires get that hot? Tires, during manufacture tires, during the vulcanization process, go up to about 160 Celsius, 170 Celsius for about half an hour. So any of the components that we use have to be automotive grade. And so, how about while they drive? They also get pretty hot? So then, well, the, the temperature range then is uh, so from Siberia to the Sahara, if you like. So minus 50 maybe, up to 100, 110. And, and they don't get pretty hot when it... So they, 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 the they, the, 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 there's two factors that cause the tire to heat up. One is the mechanical forces, so it's a, it's a viscoelastic material, so the molecules rubbing together will generate heat. And then, of course, there's heat absorption from the atmosphere, so a hot road, if you've ever put your hand on the road. Yeah. So here, what we have is, um, this is a, a, energy, a piezoelectric energy harvester, that is vibrating, uh, I think it's vibrating at about uh, 25, 30 hertz. Um, this is generating 2.3 volts, uh, and then it's charging the, sorry. For example, they need the use of load, the imitation of use of load right now, and they, it actually gives power a load. So this is without a load, and now when we put a load, the voltage drops. So it's, it's showing how this is generating enough power now to, to light an LED. So is this a new partnership with the... Combri. So Combri are based in Ulyanovsk in, in Russia and they, with their PVD technology, have developed the supercapacitor for us. Is that the one? This is the one, yeah. yeah so, uh, so what is the capacity or the... The, the lifetime and stuff like that? So it, it should have a very long life, but we're not quite there yet, so we're still in, in prototyping stage. Um, but the capacity is sufficient to drive a circuit. So this circuit here is, is, needs about one milliwatt. 
Um, so we, we've we've dimensioned everything to to operate at those sort of uh, power requirements. And this is the combination of uh, flexible electronics and. So this is a combination of flexible electronics, PVD, uh, substrate materials. What these substrates we've developed here are special, especially formulated to be compatible with the rubber in, in the tire and so these inks and the pastes that we've also developed are designed to stick to, to the substrates. Uh, this, is a, this is a natural rubber, this is a ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Um, so a lot of it is, is really about how, how do we make products that fit um, rubber polymers and elastomers because it's a, a very challenging manufacturing process with vulcanization, with injection molding, over molding, thermoplastics. Um, so by creating materials that fit those substrates and those manufacturing processes, we're actually creating Internet of Things for flexible materials. So there's a whole bunch of new materials around here. A whole bunch of new materials. So for example, uh what are the materials in here? So, so th th this is for demonstration purposes, but this is silicon, basically. Uh, and, and it just shows how much we can flex this around uh, in order to create, if you like, a, a fully compatible structure. So imagine that's the tire and it's, it's being flexed. It actually won't be flexing that much in a tire. It'd be much, yeah. much less than that. And around here, you're showing different uh, colors or different yeah, functions? The, these are actually kind of spin-offs. These are not core to what we're doing, but these are electrochromic materials. And what's cool here is that we've got electrochromic materials that aren't just blue, which is the sort of standard color, but we can do different grays and browns as well. And um, uh, uh, the ultra-low power? Yeah, so ultra-low power is kind of frames what we're doing. Everything we're doing is ultra-low power, and we've formed a, a number of partnerships that is giving us traction in these different industry sectors. So we're developing uh, sensor systems for dairy products, for milking systems, uh, which kind of fit together here for the chemical. Then for transport aviation, we're developing uh, the sensors that we've just spoken about. Um, then for marine and packaging, these the same thing can be repurposed for tracking uh, containers and ULDs and packages. Are you going to go in space? Why not? I mean, what's, what's to stop us? What would be the partner there? Like uh, SpaceX? SpaceX or... Um, Your ESA? The, 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 the ESA. I mean, there's, there's a number of companies that, that potentially we, we could go for. But we're still a small startup company, so uh, we're, we're waiting for them to knock on our door at this What does the silent sensors mean? You don't want to make any noise? It's kind of that. I mean, have you ever heard a sensor making any sound? But uh, I think it's the, 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 the silent background of of all this information and all this data that is being generated. And one of the things and, and that we, we've been successful, I believe, because we mitigate the risk by working with world-class partners, such as Artis and CPI and uh, PCL and Tyndall. And we're also very, very fortunate to have been awarded a, an instrument from Horizon 2020 through the European Commission, as well as Innovate UK through the UK. Um, so we, we, we see our uh, Europe as being very, very key to the growth of our business. So these are all kinds of partners. These are all kinds of partners. So these are industry associations that we work with. So you've got Smithers Rapper that are experts in, in the polymer and elastomer market. You've got Rain RFID, which is the industry sector for, for rain. You've got SMMT, Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders, that represent the industry in the UK. You've got Alice, which is a U, uh, EU a consortium of logistics companies. Um, so there's a there's a, an, an MIA, for example. They're all about motorsport, which kind of fits as well with the aviation and, and space technology because Formula One kind of creates all, a lot of these uh, cool things. Um, so so what's the next point for your company. So next thing for our company really is scale up. At this stage, we want to scale up. We want to get our product into the market. We want to uh, be in a tire uh, by the, the end of the year, uh, generating data um, and uh, transmitting that to the cloud. Um, one of our end goals is to also move the intelligence into the tire to create what I'd like to call sentient products uh, by using applying AI at the edge of the cloud rather than concentrating everything up in the cloud. Um, so those algorithms and those uh, 
business opportunities are, are enabled and uh, so this has a transformative effect on businesses and I would this have a little uh, microcontroller this has a little microcontroller it has a sensor and I, I think the whole the whole point of this is it's a business transformation technology it enables companies to go from product sales to as a service business models battery that's a supercapacitor. That's, that's, the, that's the Combury. No, no, this is this is actually off the shelf. That's a, I think that's a Murata, a uh, standard. The, all the components on here you can buy from Mouser or DigiKey or however. So each of these components here is a gap in the end solution, and each of these components now has to be substituted with a should we call it tire compatible component. So, so where are you based and how many people in the company? So we're 10 people. We're based in the UK and we have two offices, one in Sedgefield in the northeast of England and one in Swindon, which is uh, just uh, southwest of, of uh, London. Um, and we also have a small office in France, in Nantes. Um, and we, we have uh, partners uh, throughout Europe. Uh, and, and elsewhere in the, in, in the world, of course, we have a partnership with Ulyanovsk uh, in, um, with Combray as well. And uh, how about uh, ID TechX? What do you think about the show? I think it's brilliant. I mean, if it wasn't for ID TechX, uh, we were here for, for the first time last year, 2017, and it was a chance encounter with, with Combray that led to this partnership that we have today at this stand uh, here in Berlin. So uh, I think that for us, ID TechX has uh, helped us grow quickly and find partnerships that we otherwise wouldn't have found.